So we have a handout here that's uh, a good kind of backbone for building your own emergency uh, car kit because there's all different kinds of emergencies that one may encounter. We live along the I-5 corridor, Interstate 5, which is a fault zone. So there, we're always waiting for the big one, uh, for California to float away, for Western Washington to float away. Uh, but it may not just the big shake. Uh, there are other types of scenarios where you could have a snowstorm. Seattle can be sh shut down with, with uh, snow. Uh, two inches of snow can just shut them right down for months um, because they're not prepared for it. <clears throat> Uh, and other types of scenarios. But the scenario that we talked about in the past was of a complete vehicle, vehicular shutdown and that of all your comrades around you because of an electromagnetic pulse. That was the scenario that we put forth. So you're 25 miles from home, your car has stopped, you notice everybody else around you has stopped as well, and you have to find your way home with what you have in your car and it's 25 miles away. So 25 miles away, depending on your fitness and your ability to move around, it could take you several days to get home. So there's, there's uh, just some things, that, and you may need to shelter in place. You may, you may need to actually move from your location to your safe place, which is home or, or whatever you've designated uh, for that. So this handout will be in the comment section uh, just below the video, and you can look at that as a backbone for, for that. Uh, one thing that uh, we've looked at in addition was uh, shelter, temporary shelters. So they have, they have tube tents that one can get. It's a temporary shelter that you can uh, have. It's light and packable and easy to carry. Also, in our country here, there is rain that is almost ever-present. So there's large ponchos that can be helpful, uh, just a quick covering that is also heat retentive. So it has a mylar coating on the inside. So there are different varieties of them out there and you can I mean, just shop around and see what you can find. But there's a very reasonable price for four. You can get 17 of these mylar lined <clears throat> ponchos. 17 that, for four. Yep, 17 for four. And then you can, that'll fit over a backpack and uh, also protect it as well. Uh, so we did have a kind of a breakout where we, we did a, a car look through to see what we had as you you know as you talk to people as you experience things you'll find gaps uh, in your plan or in your life uh, for example one of the gaps that we discovered last christmas that we don't have is we don't have um, we didn't have crutches uh, we had a, a knee injury that occurred and didn't have crutches uh, didn't have uh, um, a walker, now we have a walker. Uh, so some things that you just don't think about. They're not in my car, but I'm just thinking about just finding gaps in your in your situation, whatever it might be, whether it's your car or, or whatever, um, whatever part of your life that you're working in. Um, so we'll just go through um, an updated kit that we have in one of our vehicles. Uh, one thing that is always standard in a vehicle is some kind of a first aid kit, basic first aid. Uh, for cuts and scrapes and bruises and, and whatnot. It's not comprehensive, but uh, it is a basic first aid kit that you should have. You could have your medications in here if you have that, additional medication needs, uh, and those kinds of things, but a, a first aid kit. And then one thing that, that uh, is important is portability. So along with, with everything, and just because we have everything, we have, we have things in our car so that if we're there together as a family, we have things for everybody, but if you were an individual, uh, you would be, be in a position to, to take what you needed as an individual um, to move on foot if you needed to, um, or to leave your vehicle. So not everything in the vehicle necessarily would go with you, obviously, because uh, you may have more things that, that could sustain you from a, a shelter-in-place kind of a perspective. Uh, but a, a pack is a helpful way to do that. Um, some some extra warmth, so uh, sleeping bag uh, or other blankets of different nature. It doesn't have to be a sleeping bag. It could be could be a, a fleece blanket or a wool blanket. Um, warmth if you need the shelter in place, especially in the winter time. Not as critical in the summertime, but probably would become standard equipment um, to to have that. Um, you can get cold pretty quick. Hypothermia can set in if you get wet, and uh, then that becomes critical. 
we have a, a box that has a variety of different things uh, in it around in our area, uh, a head net for bugs. You just don't know, you know, they can drive you absolutely insane. Um, so a bug net, um, a thermal, a thermal blanket. So this is a, a thermal all purpose uh, blanket that's heat retentive. Uh, so that's, that can be a helpful addition. Uh, if you're going to be eating, it's nice to have some kind of a flatware. So think about that. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> cordage, so rope of, of some kind. So if there was like a massive bleed out or somebody had a heart attack or something like that, cayenne is actually a very good blood stauncher, but it also has some blood thinning effects too in the circulatory system. If somebody had a heart attack, you can put that underneath the tongue. Um, it's a, just really good for that. If you're cold, you can make a paste of it, put it on your fingers, on your toes. It vasodilates, so it can actually uh, aid circulatory system function. So it's kind of a first aid thing, really. Um, cayenne pepper. <clears throat> um, so this is a, 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 a match, a liquid match. So it has lighter fluid in it, it has a striker on it, and uh, um, it has a sustained flame, a match can be difficult in wet weather or windy weather because it can just get blown out. So matches are good, but having something that has a little bit more longevity to it is good. It's inside of a plastic bag because we don't want to have a leakage potential. Okay. Activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is good stuff for a lot of different things. I mean, it's, it should be part of your first aid kit. Uh, if you have stomach upset or uh, you know wound care, uh, any any kinds of those things. So activated charcoal uh, of some nature. You don't know how long you're going to be free. So some toothpaste, toothbrushes, just personal hygiene kinds of things uh, is helpful. So enough enough for the family uh, because sharing a toothbrush is like sharing your brush. It's just not the best. Um, if you have any special medical needs, so for example. Contact solution. If you're if you're wearing contacts, have a contact case. I think we have contact case in there too, because prolonged wearing of contacts is not the best thing in the world. If you're a contact wearer, this is a saline solution, so it's sterile. It could also be used as a as a wash, if necessary for wound care. Uh, so in our kit, we have a a a stove set up too. So this is bottled fuel. There's a small mess kit here with uh, with a pot and stove inside of it, and even a spoon, look at that. Um, so it's a collapsible backpacking stove that uh, um, is a way to have some cooking capacity. Uh, water filtration and, and water. So this is a, a charcoal filter, but there's lots of different types of filters out there that, that could be used and start off with a water reservoir of some kind. You usually have water in your car anyway, um, some kind of a bottle, but some extra water just depending on the duration of your duress. So these aren't just for us, they could be to help someone else too. Uh, so thinking about other scenarios of people you might encounter. Uh, duct tape, uh, some just some extra bags, uh, a saw, a portable saw that uh, can open up. You have a map in your car probably of the county or the state or the nation, and a, a compass, depending on where you are, uh, can help you in your orientation and getting to uh, point B from point A. Uh, you don't know what kind of, you might need some gloves, so gloves are also part of that. This is uh, some personal warming devices, so this is a body warming pack. When you open it, it activates, has uh, kind of iron filings, I think, as a part of it that you can adhere to your body for a core warming effect. Um, and then these are just like regular ski ski toe warmers and hand warmers. That it's amazing how much comfort just having warm hands and feet can bring to you if you're, if you're not um, at home. Uh, always good at extra toilet paper. Other sanitary supplies, depending on... Your family. Oh, these are diapers. I think we left those in, in case we found a baby. Um, but they're also there because they're just good absorbent devices too. Uh, so very, very helpful. Um, and more plastic bags, some paper towels, and then a variety of different foods. So just some quick eat bars, and then something that would take some more preparation. We we sealed and de dehydrated some um, dehydrated soups that you would need to prepare. You need to put hot water into them. 
most of things are just hot water. But also, and so these are in a, a long-term kind of storage kind of thing because we found that in the containers they came in within a couple of years, you can ideally rotate stock, but if you don't, it needs to be the oxygen absorbers in here to keep them from um, going stale. Then you can just use these pouches to put water directly into and rehydrate uh, the hot water. So you don't need an extra vessel for, for bowls or plates necessarily for this particular food item. And then various nuts and other other types of, um, of food that would be helpful for uh, sustaining. So here are some banana chips that we de dehydrated, um, a high energy light uh, food. So that's kind of the foundation of what we have as a basis of, of one of our vehicles uh, for being prepared if there should be a reason that we would need to stay with our vehicle away from home or move from our vehicle if it was out of commission somewhere and we didn't have regular types of communication and accessibility to resources. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.